Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. With us today is Science and Technology Secretary Mario Montejo. As head of the DOST, Montejo sees innovators as the key to solving problems like traffic, disasters, public health issues. Montejo hopefully will talk about DOST's projects, what the department hopes to achieve during the National Science and Technology Week that's set July 23 to 27. Thank you for coming here, Secretary Th Montejo. Thank you for having me, Marietta. Nice to have you here. Nice. So tell me, what is your passion? What are you focused on right now? As a person, as DOST secretary. Let's say you, as DOST, let, well, let's say you as a person first. Okay, as a background, I was a, you can call it, you can term it technopreneur for the past 22 years before I uh, joined the government. Technopreneur is really uh, uh, going into business based on your ideas, no, normally technology ideas. Fantastic. So I was a one of the one. I was the first manufacturer of well screen before it was uh, foreign yeah, imported. I developed equipment to manufacture this well screen, and with that kind of approach, we went to other kind of products. That's why I firmly believe that local technology works. Now, as a DOST secretary, the mandate really of the DOST is to use, to harness science, technology, innovation for social, economic benefit of the Filipino people. Yes. This is really aligned to the what uh, the NEDA secretary, Balikasan, uh, presented that to harness science, technology, and innovation to improve our competitiveness. So this is, all our programs are really aligned to this. So competitiveness in terms of products, services, and even providing government services. And what exactly are you focused on right now? We, uh, we are in primarily involved in maybe four or five programs, okay. big programs. One is in agri, agriculture, mm -hmm. uh, to use, again, to be able to provide the know-how and the tools yes. to improve our competitiveness to global standards. Okay. Again, f to improve our competitiveness of our industry, eh, starting first with our SMA, SME yes. and our industry as a whole yes. uh, for disaster preparedness. And the fifth is for, uh, for the human, for the Filipino, improvement of human, uh, Filipino lives, or health, or well-being. When I go. I like your first statement. You said you're a technopreneur. How far away are we from having that kind of mentality go through not just the OST but our government as a whole? Okay. Uh, <coughs> we have to really uh, orient or make it more popular, or to the, the public, both government and the private, that the use of science, technology, and innovation can really improve, of course, the competitiveness, thereby resulting to viability, not only a big business, but especially small and medium. We have a program in the USD which we call the Setup. Setup, okay. And this has been, I mean, there for the past 10 years. But amazingly, to technology intervention yes. to SME throughout the, throughout the Philippines. We supported maybe hundreds, thousands of uh, small, small yes. firms. Yes. We give, part of the intervention is uh, financial support yes. to get um, uh, equipment. Yes. But the payback, because they have to pay it back li liberally. Yes in three years time was 85 percent wow. the 15 percent would include those that were what, uh, that have impacted by natural disaster but 85 percent a good number it just shows that uh, using technology can really make your uh, business more viable and we are talking here of business all over the Philippines. That's uh, great. Some, some are small. 
again, technology is turning the world inside out, yeah. and every business is being disrupted to some degree with it. Um, you've made it work as a technopreneur, but in terms of using this technology now for big societal problems, I mean, we mentioned some of them early on. The one that people know about the most seems to be Project NOAA. Um, disaster risk reduction. Could you tell us more about what technology are you looking at, and and give me an, a case study, say of Project Noah. How are you put? How are you using that to solve the big problems that we have? Project Noah was in response to a very clear instruction of our president to have an early warning for flood events. Yes. In all the 18 major river system. That's why this was after uh, Sendong, and for have to, to have this operational within two years. Okay. For us to have a right perspective, lang, young early flood early warning has has been installed in four major river system before, and uh, this was done maybe for the past thirty years, forty years. Mm -hmm. And all of them was implemented by foreign, using foreign technology yes. or even foreign uh, companies. But we were instructed to have this in the 18 major river system in two years' time. And all of the technology involved and all the people that uh, were, we used were Filipino scientists and engineers. What is it really about? Yes. It composed of three major components. Maybe there's another fourth maybe for messaging. The first one is to have a LiDAR map on the major river system, including the basin, the river basin, the watershed, mm -hmm. uh, the river, the floodplains. This is a high resolution topo map mm -hmm. from which our engineers develop uh, flood modeling mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. models. The second one is to install uh, water level sensors mm -hmm. and rain gauges in yes. the watershed. And uh, the last one is to, uh, uh, to, uh, to use data from these sensors, mm -hmm. incorporate it into the modeling, and to come up with a simulation, flight okay. simulation. Uh, at first, it was six hours. Actually, the instructions really to have a six hours early warning. Okay. Why six hours? Because just like in Marikina, the flood that caused Marikina came from Sierra Madre. Yes. And the time that it took for the water from Marikina to reach, uh, uh, from, sorry, from Sierra Madre to reach Marikina is around five to six hours. So if we can monitor the, the rain in the Sierra Madre, somehow we can have, and use modeling, how it will, how the impact it will cause to the floodplain, which yes, is Marikina. Yes, sir. So that, similar to that, that's what we are doing all over the Philippines. And uh, we have models for 8, 12 of the river system. We are confident that we can complete the 18 by end of this year or early part of next year. Fantastic. And uh, we have installed maybe 450 of the sensors, the 525 that would be needed. And uh, early part of next month, we would fully install all the remaining sensors. Actually, all of them already deployed, so it's the last part na lang yung uh, installation. So, by the end of this year, uh, the 18 river system would be fully operational, the early warning would by the end of this year. But it partially worked in Marikina, last na yung yes. last baha. Correct. It worked also in Cagayan de Oro and Iligan, I mean, Typhoon Pablo. Yes. And uh, it's one of the reasons why we were able to get early warning, why the, the, there was minimal uh, or almost none. What are the challenges in trying to get something like this to, to embed it into our system? I mean, this is something we've been talking about, the country's been talking about since like 2007, you know, trying to get, before NDRRMC was NDRRMC. Now DOST has technology coming in to try to help people avoid danger during these things. How, what's the difficulty of getting it institutionalized as part of the reactions? Okay, maybe the first part is why are we partly successful? Right? Yes, okay. okay, let's put it, yes, okay. definitely. The first one is that 
uh, our president believes in technology. Yes. And also uh, Filipino scientists and engineers. Bec with, that, with this kind of support, we were able to really uh, but push ahead, uh, push ahead with the programs. In spite of, of course, apprehension of other people that that can we do it? I mean, especially since all other early warning flood not in a was not Filipino uh, developed. Yes. In fact, there was a lot of doubt about whether we could do it, right, at the beginning when the president did that. So y you're right. You yes. were successful in... And in also because uh, we're dealing with 18. Yes. We're in decades before the total number of uh, river system that have some, some form of early warning was four or, four or five only. Okay. We're trying to complete it 18 in two years. We're just, I mean... It just shows what Filipino can do. Yes, yes. It's a very aggressive timetable. So then, aside from that, because the so again, political will. I hear this all the time, from the RH law to the to the to the um, impeachment of the former Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. But in this in this situation now, so you have you've created a system that's new. People are using it. Certainly, people on social media are aware of it. It's helped got, got, get more information to people. How are you institutionalizing it as part of the government's response down to our LGUs using it? Okay, first of all is, uh, of course, because we use social media, we are using all, all uh, forms of uh, communication. Yes. Yes. And uh, as you mentioned, it's uh, appreciated now by, by the public. So it's easier for us to go to the LGU and uh, use this uh, system. The second one is really, because again, uh, because of technology, it's sometimes very hard to appreciate uh, weather forecast, the public, to appreciate what it can do. Yes. But if it is in the form of inundation maps, I mean visual, Yes, yes. they can now really appreciate what, what will happen. So what, what, what Project NOAA would be presenting is, let's say, six hours from now, assuming there might be a uh, flood events, we will show the area where the flood, uh, the, where there will be flooding, even the de depth, of course, to a certain uh, uh, range. But yes. people can now appreciate the flood, not just by saying flood, but saying where the flood will be. Yes. So this is where nakatulong talaga itong other form of technology yes. to make it visually and f with that it becomes more appreciated by the public. Now, all of the, uh, even in Pablo when we identified the vulnerable areas, we simulated for example, what will happen if another Pablo will occur in Compostela? Correct. And we made some simulation, mm -hmm. and what will happen? I mean, um, uh, hopefully it will not happen. But anyway, it clearly shows the areas wherein it will it would be safe if another Pablo will happen. So with this kind of visualization, and these are all science based, uh, somehow it, it, the public would appreciate it, and it will take it. I mean, I mean easier for them to be convinced. What are your challenges? What what do you see are uh, are challenges that are preventing you from being, you said partially successful, from being completely successful? Uh, actually, we are proceeding. At, in, uh, uh, the the pace is accelerating. Maybe the uh, I mean the hardest was the first one. Yes. As you mentioned earlier, there were some apprehension if it can be done. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, because of the components, the sensors that we installed were also locally developed and fabricated. Yes. So the modeling was, again, developed by us. Yes. Even the LiDAR maps, Yes. we do it differently now. Before we bought maps, mm -hmm. mapping products, right? Now we bought the instrument. Yes. And we process the data into, into products. Mm -hmm. uh, because of this capability building. Yes. We, we are able to 
develop other products or other application and uh, again because of this I mean after the uh, first apprehension it's now a little bit easier okay so, yeah so I, I, we do not look at it now as I mean, there's more appreciation definitely I think that's true we've seen it so so that you're halfway through your term um, from the minute you began until the minute you end I guess so far in the first three years what do you consider the greatest achievements and what do you plan to push forward in the next three years okay the, the first three years was really starting so the, the, uh, the first uh, I mean, uh, let's go to the approach first. Yes. Is to have a more direct outcome, more tangible mm -hmm. outcome. Mm -hmm. Meaning outcome that can be used in the marketplace by producers, I mean, to improve competitiveness. Now, even if it's, we call it direct uh, applied search, it takes years. So, the appreciation of the outcome would come years after. Yes. But we have started, and some of them would, some of them are already uh, here. Yes. Some of them would be next year. Yes. We're excited on the, uh, the potential uh, rollout next year and the years after that. And uh, n this isn't just Project NOMO. What are the rollouts that we will expect in the coming For years? For example, in shrimps, let's shrimps. go to aquaculture. Let's Interesting. Let's okay. okay. Problem with shrimp industry, even way back. I mean, it, it was a it was a boom industry yes. before. Yes. They encounter the problem with disease, white spot. They call it white spots. We are able to, I mean, uh, use science to address making our shrimps uh, resistant to this kind of disease. But even more important is that we are able to improve the yield for example for every hectare before it was let's say number one ton per hectare B before the target was 10 tons per hectare to increase mm -hmm. it 1,000 mm -hmm. times mm -hmm. or 1,000 percent mm -hmm. but now our scientists are what, positive or conf confident that they, they can even increase it even more than 10 times so this kind of productivity growth or productivity increase mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is uh, exciting mm -hmm. uh, makes it uh, well, beneficial anyway the, yes, the normal yes. word but we're also looking at because productivity is input output yes increasing output yes. normally with the same input but yes. even better increasing output with less inputs correct yes. so we are always targeting increasing output and lessening the input Mm -mm. So, for, for example, for same really the amount of feed that uh, has to be provided for the stream with the same output. Right now, it's even increasing the output. So, uh, we were able to convince our scientists to commit to certain numbers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, we are now ready for rollout next year. Fantastic. Others? So the private sector. Aside from the, sh the shrimp? Shrimp, tilapia, bangus. We are very uh, curious with mud crab, uh, even tahong. This is really direct. Um, yes, would have a direct uh, but uh, for example, even for this, uh, we need the we call it sometimes in plant in agriculture planting materials. Yes. To, to have good quality planting materials, but we have also we have a we call it emerging technologies program, and one of them is genome. Yeah. Oh, that's Everybody's great. Everybody's familiar with genome. Yes, of course. So we we're trying to find DNA markers for, for example, even for, uh, as I mentioned, I mean, uh, shrimps, DNA markers. Yes, that, uh, yes. What are the DNA markers that make it uh, fast growing or this is resistant? Interesting. And to use this DNA market to, fi to, to find for the mother, the, for the brood stock. So, so if, if I were to characterize an obsession, the obsession that's driving you, it is, uh, it's really, you, you mentioned direct outcomes. So you're looking for how to use science to be able to increase productivity? Productivity for us to be competitive. And for us to, be produ to increase productivity, you have to get the, the best 
best practice na, or the cutting edge technologies. And one of them is genome. Yeah, fantastic. So what, what, what would make a Filipino, I, I guess, do we have the brains? Do we have the scientists oh, to do this? Definitely, yes, we have. And even with, we, even with genome program that we have, yeah. that is with uh, UP, it started slowly. But yes. now, because we have a very good, what we call, let's say, roadmap for it, yes. the application is multiplying. I mentioned earlier, we are trying to make DNA markers as the, uh, the almost the mainstream to get good quality planting materials. Yes. So we're talk we're early talking about shrimp, tilapia, bangos, you know. mm -hmm. but also for plants, for example, for yes. rice, co uh, coconut, yes. uh, even mango and other plants, the, even sugar cane. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so we have all, all, all of these programs so the, to identify DNA markers of plants with superior traits or uh, characteristic and to make consistent the, what, the, the seed links. Okay, interesting. I mean, IRI ha IRI has been here for, for decades and they've been doing this kind yes, of genetic yes, modification yes, with yes, rice. Yes. Um, Part of what I think is appealing to many foreigners, though, is the fact that our our vegetables, our produce, are all not genetically modified. I mean, is that no, no? It's, we're not we're not going to genetically modify. Okay, it's just identifying the DNA markers. Ah, okay. So you won't go as far. No, no. Okay, because no, no, no. I mean, they've, they've talked about problems, for example, with the plumper tomatoes, right? Uh, not. I'm I mean, we're not talking about uh, uh, technology. What, uh, there are advantages. Yes. But uh, I'm genetically modified. There are tec tec technical advantages for that. But there is also public uh, negative. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it, uh, like anything with technology, it has positives and negatives, right? And but we are more on the identifying the DNA markers of superior, which is you can find. So then you will grow that type? You, you won't? Or for, example, uh, for example, for coconut. Okay. Sometimes a disease uh, yes. attacks uh, the whole uh, hundreds of hectares, yes. but there are survivors. Yes, the survival of the fittest. Yes, yes. so you're going to... Uh, identifying yeah. what are the DNA markers of that survivor. So there are also plenty of coconut trees, and some trees would produce with a good yield. Great, I you understand. Secretary Montejo, I have a lot of questions coming in from social media for you, and I can speak to you for hours about this, but we have a limited amount of time. Let, let me throw some of these out. Um, uh, from at moves like Jang uh, on social on Twitter, uh, asking what are the DOST's plans regarding the, oh, I'm sorry, this is from at Rapa site. What's your plan for education? Okay, two things. <coughs> you can't have scientists without education, right? Going. Okay, okay. M maybe improving education, maybe I can yes. provide up to, uh, uh, connectivity, uh, as you mentioned earlier, is yes. could really improve yes. not only education, but all, uh, all, uh, all kinds of uh, uh, government services, provi providing government services. So we have, a, we are developing. We have a program to be able to address connectivity yes. throughout the Philippines. Yes. But so you, 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 really you believe that connectivity will, will boost Definitely. everything. Yeah. Definitely. That is a what, leveraging or uh, improving, uh, I mean, leveraging uh, the, the uh, people in the rural areas. The second one is uh, early. This morning we launched, we call it LEAP. Yes. The LEAP uh, is a really a software program to improve our English proficiency. It was really developed uh, to address the low hiring rate for BP, ITB, for BPO. Okay. So we developed this program and uh, it's, it uses uh, voice recognition, speech recognition, it uses uh, artificial intelligence, and of course, good speech. And 
and integrating all this discipline, we come up with a software that you can use. Fantastic. To learn alone. English. Yeah. Small up is, we call it skill enhancement. But uh, using all of this technology, we, are, we would like to look into other mode of training or skills enhancement. So maybe this can support our ed education. The other problem we have now also is since technology levels the playing field, yeah. our skilled scientists can make a lot more money overseas than staying here. How do you retain the scientists? Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, most, most scientists, it's really the fulfillment that's important for them. It's not really the monetar monetary. As long as they're the basic needs are fulfilled, mm -hmm. they would be more interested in the fulfillment. And I think there's the, the highest form of fulfillment if what you can do can really I mean, result to benefit for the let's say, for us, for the Filipino yes, people. Yes. I think th th those are the uh, th those are the main drive drivers of, uh, of our scientists. So by creating this kind of environment, by having all of these programs which would result to yes. improvement of the lives of the Filipino, I think th th that is the great, uh, the, the most important uh, moti motiva motivation. Are you seeing that happening now in the last three years? Yes. That's good, that's good to hear. Um, let me ask you about the, we've been talking a while, but government services. How are you using technology to cut red tape to, you know, I, I watched you do a wonderful presentation on traffic and it's, it's uh, you showed time motion studies of the MRT. I actually don't, still don't see that reflected outside, you know, in, in the traffic scene. How, what are you doing? Let's focus on traffic before I ask about other government services. You can see I have 10 million questions, but how do you take that? scientific study that you did and make it a reality so that we can cut down our traffic? First of all, uh, <coughs> definition of the problem, let's say traffic. Yes. Okay. One thing, one thing is fixed. Yeah. The road space. Yes. Another thing that uh, we have to address is the, the transport requirements of the public. And it's always increasing. Yes. But we have only a definite road space. Yes. And how many people can we convey with uh, our existing way transport system? Correct. I think those are the things that we really have to find yes. better ways of uh, uh, transporting uh, the public. But I actually, the, stud the presentation you gave was very specific, the number of people yes. within this yes. area, yes. The, you know, the number that can ride the MRT yes. at any specific point in time. So, so but you've uh, the done these. Us. Yes. We can only do, I mean, we can only uh, present a objective definition of the problem and even alternative okay. mode of transport but it involves other social uh, concerns uh, what are we doing yes. in the USD one is that we have an AGT in, in, uh, in UP yes we are conducting test hopefully it will be finished by September mm -hmm. so by that time we are more confident if it can be used we are uh, deploying or installing a bigger one. Mm -hmm. Bigger one means it would have the same uh, capacity as our MRT in Bikutan, mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. but it's another test, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. test truck. We are also, most probably, it's now being forbid. Uh, we call it road train, the mm -hmm. one we presented in, yes. in, that, uh, in that event, yes. which is uh, rubber tired, can be deployed in the uh, existing road. Yes. System. And another one is the real train, which can be deployed in PNR. Yes. All of them are now ready for its various stages of bidding. Hopefully, the prototype would be scheduled in end of the year. Interesting. So the road train would be uh, uh, would have a big capacity, let's say 400, 500 per road train. Uh, it would be more energy efficient. Yes. And uh, it doesn't really require it elevated. And if 
use it as a system, transport mm -hmm. system, it would have almost the same. Mm -hmm. Same, I mean, mm -hmm. we have to clarify that all the same as uh, elevated uh, train okay. system. Can I ask you again, watching that presentation was fascinating for me. In order to come up with some with these solutions you're recommending, you needed to, I to identify the problem. So what is the problem that you see when it comes to traffic in Manila? What needs to be solved? Okay, let's go first for the given. Yeah. We'll just have a fixed road space. So what this uh, would result to, uh, what the is to increase, I mean, let's go to road space, and we need uh, to transport, let's say, one million passengers a day. Yes. Let's say, assuming th those are the numbers. Yes. We, uh, but it's definite. I mean, we're talking about buses, we're talking about taxis, we're talking about private cars. Yes. But one lane, you c if it's really reserved, yes, can move dedicated, faster. Dedicated. Yeah. Yeah, you can be able to transport, let's say, one million or let's say six hundred thousand or seven hundred thousand. I've seen this in Jakarta. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I interesting. Um, we are. <laughs> let me let me throw the other questions at you. So traffic was one. Um, government services was the other part of that question. How do you cut red tape? What other what other recommendations have you made to actually improve government services? Actually, this is not uh, not only this is a uh, co collaboration between uh, DOSC ICTO, okay, DBM and NEDA, uh, Givo, EGOV, you call it EGO project. EGOV, EGOV. yes, yes, I, yes, and yes. also an IGOV. Yes, uh, I mean that those are the initiative of the government to 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 harmonize. Or the IT system. So it's a collaborative yes, effort collaborative inside government. Yes. And that will really address the what you mentioned earlier, the cut the processes, Fantastic. using ICT as the enabling. Aside from Project NOAA, is there something that, that is a symbol of success of that EGOV? No, EGOV is not really part, part of Project NOAA. Yeah. EGOV is yeah. a Aside from that, from which is a DOST initiative, right? Aside from, because that one is the one where we focus the most attention on DOST. NOAA. So, asi yeah, aside well, let's from go that. What, what comes after NOAA? Yes. Like like to yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Okay. <coughs> Earlier, I was trying to uh, picture what is really Project NOAA, what's the components. Yes. For example, drain in the Sierra Madre would fall, would, would go to Marikina. What we are trying to do is improve our weather forecasting. So we would have a supercomputer by the end of this year. We would be using better or more enhanced modeling using that supercomputer. So instead of current rain, mm -hmm. it would be seven days. We could have a forecast seven Projections. days before. Yes, 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 yes. So in effect, we would have six to seven days projection if th there is a possibility of flooding in Marigina. Now, all of this information, we are talking here of flooding. Yes. We are talking here of the role, sometimes the role, it's the role of uh, Pagasa, which is my, sometimes um, identified with typhoon tracking. Yes. But the other role of Pagasa is really a weatherman. Yes. Even, I mean, sometimes even more important. Af before or if there is no typhoon to identify the areas where there will be some draws yes. drought yes even uh, having a rainfall picture for the yes. next month for the yes. next season that will be very beneficial for the for the farmers and having all of this information area specific yes meaning if you know, for example here would there be rain or how much rain yes. will there be so we call this a smarter part of a component of a smarter ag agriculture so okay. using all of this information to help the farmers and how do you do the infrastructure for this because one of the things we've done now is also to look at pagasa mm -hmm. it's uh, what resources they have uh, and in one station for example in katanduanes i think which is where our science reporter went you had the Pag-asa scientists there, but then they couldn't get the data back 
to base because they didn't have connectivity. You know, <laughs> I mean, they were using a USB. So how, how do you deal with these challenges? What are those challenges and how do you deal with them? Okay, of course we have to address all these connectivity yes. uh, requirements, definitely. Uh, but we always look at it on a na nation, s national scope. For example, earlier we were talking about seven days weather forecast. It will not be, because we are using supercomputer, it's, it will not only be more accurate, it will be more area specific, meaning we have different weather information for different areas. And also it will, aside from seven days, we will have, have a seasonal weather information, meaning six yes. months from now, four months. And uh, again, using the supercomputer, we can downscale uh, climate change scenarios that's again fantastic. to specific areas. Yes, yes, and that's critical for a country that's ranked number three, the third most vulnerable in the world. Yes, correct? yes. I mean, if you're going to go to disaster preparedness, yes, we need information for us to be able to develop mitigation strategy. Correct. And all of this information will now be more air specific or watershed specific or around the river basin. Yes, fantastic. So, sorry, La, I know I said, aside from Project NOAA, okay. what other things do we expect now from you? We okay, uh, about for the agriculture. Example, we are uh, working with DOH. Yes, yes, exactly. Actually, that's a the question from one of the people on Twitter. Uh, DOST's plans regarding uh, DOH, new joint agreement with DOH to promote e-health, also DOST and telemedicine. Yes. Tell us more about it. Can you tell us? Okay. Maybe, I don't know the exact number, but around 50% of Filipinos dies without seeing a doctor. We've been trying to address that. I mean, generation. But yes. I don't think it's that possible. I don't, I don't think it's possible to physically yes. Filipinos to see a doctor. But using technology, that's what we call telehealth. Telehealth. We call it RxBox, wherein a patient can be diagnosed. It has sensors, yes. like an ECG, like uh, all the, all the sensors that is needed when in the clinic, and all of this data can be communicated to the central to the to the doctor. Yes. That, that necessarily in the yes. warrior. Yes, yes. We are very very bullish with this yes. technology. We are now testing with I think twenty or fifty all over the Philippines. I mean, geographically. Yes. We are. We would like to ramp it up. Because I think we have the technology, it's now more on the system Yes. to make the system more stable, more reliable, because we're talking about medical, we're talking yes. about health. Health. So you're doing this in conjunction with DOH? Yes. Uh, hopefully next year, I mean, we're talking about hundreds, and eventually, I mean, we're all being positive yes. to be able to reach out to all the barangays. And, but key to this is going to be connectivity again, yes. right? So that's, I actually saw um, Catalyst, which is one of the initiatives of, I believe it's Kickstarter. Uh, Kickstarter and Idea Space are trying to amplify things like this, and they have something called Inanai, you know, getting health, prenatal health care to women, but again, it was through through connectivity, yes. which is a chicken or egg question if you think about it. But this sounds fantastic. So that was a question from at Marcelo on yes. Twitter, very interested in this. So that is a, the e-health. Are there other components yeah, of it? Yeah. Again, to address the connectivity. Yes. We are looking at TV white space. To, yes, we are. Are you working with Google on this? Google talked about um, moving into that white space. Maybe, or Microsoft. But we are work, working with uh, USAID. We have a pilot project in Bohol. Fantastic. So this is a very cost-effective of uh, being able to reach out to the unserved or underserved areas who has the connectivity. For example, in the late, the latest Comelec -com election. Yes. Maybe 70, I don't know exact number, maybe 70, 70 plus percent, the results were known immediately using the connectivity of our, of our te telcos. That, that would mean that 30 of the precincts uh, does it have that, that kind of connectivity. This would be able to address that. Again, with, with this kind of a cost effect, 
collective uh, initiative to address connectivity, it would also benefit, as you mentioned earlier, education, because they would have internet. Yes. And hopefully the, the very, very positive uh, or benefit for health would be the, the, base, the, the, the driver to really push for this. And all other government service can be made available because of this improvement of connectivity. And we're talking nationwide. By when? Again, we are we are always bullish and we're always yes. positive thinking. Yes. 2015, 2016? Before the end of your term. Yes. Fantastic. How much connectivity? Because the telcos won't say anything like this, really. How much? 100% connectivity? I mean, coverage? Yes. P possible? Yes. Yes. Possible. Fantastic. Yes. We got to tweet that. 100% <laughs> in connectivity by 2015, 2016. One, uh, let's say 99. 99% oh, connectivity. Um, yeah. Let me pull down. This is from social media. Um, I don't have it. I don't have a... It's not there. Um, well, let me ask you to wrap up. This is exciting. It's, it's wonderful to end on an exciting note. That's the best news I've gotten <laughs> in a long time. 99% connectivity within three years' time. That we are that push, pushing for that. What do you need to make that happen? Uh, maybe a little policy and uh, hopefully private uh, collaborators. Are you talking telcos or beyond telcos? Both, both, both. both. You also need, if it's TV white space, you need NTC. Yes. Right? Yes. Do you need the TV stations, the broadcast stations, to help with something like this or to no? To support. To support it, yes. not to stand in the way of it. TV stations don't stand in the way of this. <laughs> That's <laughs> fantastic. Let me give you, we have been here now for, for a while. Let me give you last thoughts, last words. Very exciting time. Um, lots of problems also, but your last thoughts. Uh, we, we would like the uh, would like to welcome everybody to visit us. Uh, we have a science week ex exhibit in SMX MOA. We would really like to convey the message that uh, harnessing science, technology, innovation can really improve our competitiveness. For SME, it can improve your viability. We have many technologies that are available for you. Uh, we have actually yesterday we have, we have a the whole day for the SME. Again, for those who have not yet visited our exhibit, we welcome you and hope you can appreciate better what the relevance and the potential of what science technology can do. Fantastic. Thank you very much. We have been speaking with Mario Montejo, the Science and Technology Secretary on the DOST's innovative projects to solve various problems. There are a lot of problems, and now we're using science to try to tackle them. I'm Maria Ressa. Thank you for watching. I have